Hey everybody, welcome back to Living Traditions Homestead. Today we want to show you guys how we are taking advantage of some of the holiday sales that are going on at our local grocery store by buying things at the grocery store and putting them in the freeze dryer. Uh, this is something that is going to save us not only money in the long run, because as you know, everything seems to be going up in price these days, but right now things are extra low because of some holiday sales that are going on. Now, you all know that we try really hard to grow and raise most of our own food, but there are some things that either we don't find success in growing on particular seasons or this climate just isn't right for growing some things. So it's with these holiday sales that we use to uh, fill in some of those holes and some of those gaps. Right, and there's some things that we grow a lot of, like say green beans, which is actually one of the things we're gonna be freeze drying today. But we can all of the green beans right. or we eat them fresh. We don't, you know, we didn't, haven't saved enough this year to then freeze and freeze dry our own green beans. And there are several things like that throughout the year that we can find good deals on at the store. And then those are perfect to go through the freeze dryer for long term and short term storage. Now, if you don't have a freeze dryer, this is still a great time to be stocking up on some of those foods that go on tremendous sales this time of year. But there are things that if you do have a freeze dryer are perfect candidates for freeze drying. What we're going to be doing today is actually frozen mixed vegetables. They were on sale at our local grocery store this week for 79 cents a bag. And because they're already frozen, it's easy to bring them home, basically pour them on the freeze dryer trays, throw them in the freeze dryer, and in 24 hours you have perfect freeze dried vegetables. But if you don't have a freeze dryer, you can just bring them home and put them in the freezer and use them all year long. Right, or you could dehydrate them if that's something that you wanna do. Just right. remember that the shelf life on dehydrated isn't nearly the same as the shelf life on freeze dried, which is why really the main reason that we switched from doing dehydrating to freeze drying. Right. And now while we're on that subject, we want to just quickly tell you the reasons why we are starting to freeze dry a lot more things rather than dehydrate or just put it in the freezer. Right. To be honest, since we got the freeze dryer, we haven't really dehydrated no. anything anymore. We no. still have our dehydrator, but uh, we really haven't used it since we got the freeze dryer. So the main reason that we started freeze drying was because of shelf life. When you freeze dry things, even at home, in these home freeze dryers, the shelf life is anywhere from 15 to 25 years long. Right. Versus a dehydrator, it's a year or less. Right. Especially in a humid climate like we have, uh, it just seems like the, like the dehydrator just never really gets them really, really dry. In fact, when you look at some of the kind of science behind it, they say even the best dehydrators get things that they only take out about 70% of the water. So they leave about 30% of the moisture still in the food where a freeze dryer takes out 99% of the moisture, which is why it makes it last so much longer. The other thing that is really important about freeze drying is that it maintains like all of the nutrients. Whereas with dehydrating, it retains about 60% of the nutrients and through the cooking process of canning, you lose even more. Right, so when you think about that, I mean, that's a big deal. With dehydrating, you lose 40% of your nutrition right up front. So that's, I mean, that's a big deal when you're trying to, you know, put away things for, for the future or maybe put things away for a rainy day and you want good nutritious food when you open it back up. 40% of your nutrition is gone right off the bat with dehydrating. Uh, that really shocked me when we originally learned that. Right. Now, whenever we talk about freeze drying versus dehydrating, one thing that comes up over and over again is a lot of people, for some reason, assume that freeze drying must use just a ton of electricity. We actually did an entire video on this subject if you want to go watch that, but I'll kind of spill the beans here today. <laughs> we ran the freeze dryer, we did a batch of things that took 24 hours, and we also did the same thing in the in the dehydrator for 24 hours. It costs $1.40 to run the freeze dryer for 24 hours, and it costs $1.17 to run the dehydrator for the same amount of time. So 23 cents difference, I don't consider that a big deal, um, and really for the benefits that you're getting out of freeze drying, it really ended up being a much better deal to run the freeze dryer than it did running the dehydrator. And I would have never thought that 
it was so inexpensive to run a freeze dryer. Right. I, I had no idea. I was shocked at how inexpensive it was. Right, because to be honest, before we got one, we just assumed because like everybody else right that it would have been that it uses a ton of power because you've got the freeze dryer itself you've got the vacuum pump you just it seems like a lot of equipment um but none of it uses all that much power to run right so enough talking about all of this we're going to grab the veggies that we got from the grocery store we're going to put them on the trays load up the freeze dryer and get it going and then after these vegetables are freeze dried we're actually going to bring them back in the house most of them we're going to package up but we're actually going to make supper tomorrow night out of the freeze dried vegetables so you guys can see how to actually use them in a meal as well. So these are the vegetables that our local store had on uh, sale this week for 79 cents a bag. It's 12 ounces of mixed vegetables and then we also have a couple bags of just peas because I wanted to try those as snacks. So there's 12 ounces of vegetables in each bag. I think we're gonna be able to fit two bags per tray. And uh, again, so we'll fit 24 ounces per tray. We don't really know yet how many ounces of freeze dried veggies these are going to make uh, because obviously they'll weigh a lot less because they won't have any moisture in them. Right. What we do know is that the freeze dried mixed veggies online are really pretty expensive. Right. Yeah. On Amazon, I looked up and they are selling for about between $2.40 and $2.50 an ounce for freeze dried. So obviously these aren't gonna weigh 24 ounces when we're done. So right. when we're done, we're actually gonna weigh them and then we'll figure out how much this cost us and how much it would have cost us to buy that many online. Right. So we're gonna pour these on the trays and then we're gonna head out to the freeze dryer. All right, let's take these out to the freeze dryer. All right, so here's our freeze dryer. We have the medium size Harvest Right freeze dryer. This holds four trays. And then we have the Premier oil pump. They also sell an oilless pump, but it's quite an upgrade. So we have the oil pump. Uh, this is the Premier one though, and you only have to do oil changes on it about every 30 batches. So it's really not a big deal at all. So uh, the freeze dryer itself, uh, we're just gonna open up. We're gonna load these trays inside. And I'm guessing for these mixed veggies, it's gonna take probably about 24 hours to freeze dry them. That's one advantage of going to the store and buying pre-frozen uh, vegetables is if you bring them right home and put them in the freeze dryer while they're already frozen or while they're still frozen, you don't have to pre-freeze them in your freezer or in the freeze dryer, they're already frozen. So we'll shut that, make sure it's made a good seal around the gasket here. We'll hit the start button. It's gonna ask us if our food is frozen or not frozen. We're gonna say yes, it's frozen. And then it's gonna start cooling down the system. And after that, it just takes over all on its own. Well, it is the next afternoon we just took everything out of the freeze dryer and you guys look at how amazing this stuff looks. It looks awesome. It looks exactly the way it did when we put it in. I think that is one of the really cool things about freeze drying is that it looks exactly the same when you take it out. When, when we used to do a lot of dehydrating, I mean, things just looked a lot different when they were done than when they started, but this stuff looks exactly the same. Yeah, I wanna try a couple of these because I'm just so, so curious. I already snuck some on the way in. He did, he ruined the fun. I haven't tried any of them. I haven't tried everything yet though. I tried a lima bean, I tried a piece of corn, and a pea. So, I'm gonna try green beans. Basically, you tried everything. I'm gonna try green bean. I'm gonna try the corn. Mmm, green beans are good. Carrots. You guys, it's amazing. It's the taste is exactly as it is fresh. The corn's really good. I'm wishing it had a little salt on it though. Now that these are done, before we eat it all, <laughs> we need to weigh it and we need to figure out how much this would have cost us 
had we purchased this freeze-dried food. Now again, remember, each bag was 12 ounces, and there's two bags per tray to start with. So there's 24 ounces of vegetables on each tray to start with. So let's weigh it and see how much it is now. So we're gonna put the entire tray, hopefully, in one bowl. Most of your stuff, most of yours is going all over the counter. Yeah. All right, so 24 ounces turned into four and a half ounces of finished product. So if we take our calculator and we figure out, what did we say, $2.45 about per ounce on Amazon. So 245 times 4.5. So this bowl right here, full of freeze-dried veggies, would have cost us about $11 on Amazon at $2.45 an ounce. But we bought the two bags for $0.79 cents each or so, say $0.80 cents each. So we spent $1.60 on this amount of freeze-dried food. Right. But now remember, we need to add in our electric costs, which is about $1.40 per batch, which would be all four trays. So if we take this one tray... That's about 35 cents, so we'll add 35 cents to this. So along with the electric cost, we've got about $1.95. And then by the time we package it, we're going to put these in Mylar bags. These Mylar bags are about 50 cents, and the oxygen absorbers are about 35 cents. So we're looking at about another 85 cents there. So we're looking at about, about $2.75 total for everything the to to make this batch. So $2.75 versus $11. That's quite a difference. Uh, I really think that it makes it worth doing this at home. Now, a lot of times when we do these kind of figures, especially for freeze dryer videos, people say, well, it doesn't take into consideration the cost of the freeze dryer. And while that's true, I just want to kind of bring up that when you're making meals at home from scratch and you're figuring out how much money you're saving by by making that by making that food at home versus going out to eat, nobody's ever building in the cost of your oven or your microwave or your or, grill or, the or propane whatever or anything. Right. So right. I mean, we need to do comparisons fairly right. and and I agree that yes, there is quite an initial upfront investment in a freeze dryer. But that's exactly what it is. It's right. an investment and over time you will pay that investment down. So right. we're looking at just the actual cost of the food that we're making today. Now we do need to package all of these uh, because three of these are going to be for long-term storage, but one of them, the one that we just weighed, we're gonna use that, we're gonna eat it, plus we're gonna use it in our recipe today. So the, the first tray, we're just gonna put into a jar. This is not gonna last long. Uh, we're gonna eat this up and use it in today's dinner. Right. The other three trays we're gonna put in Mylar bags with oxygen absorbers and we're gonna seal it with the sealer that came with our freeze dryer. Okay, you guys, we are gonna try out our freeze dried mixed veggies by creating a drop biscuit turkey pot pie. It's so easy and delicious. Let's get started. For this dinner, we are going to be using a cast iron skillet for the entire meal. We're going to start off on the stove top and then we're going to finish it right in the oven. The cast iron is perfect for this kind of meal. So we're going to start off by sauteing some onions and we're going to use a couple tablespoons of fat. You can use butter. I'm using home rendered um, lard from our pigs. Two tablespoons is what we want to use. We're not just going to use that to fry the onions. Then we're going to be adding some flour to make a roux, which will ultimately thicken our sauce. So we're going to melt that in our pan. Once it's melted, we'll add in our onions. While our fat has melted, I'm going to go ahead and add one onion that has been diced up. Now I am cooking this on a medium heat. 
we're just gonna saute these onions. Not until they're brown, but until they're translucent. In this recipe, I'm gonna be using two pint jars of our canned turkey from Thanksgiving. Inside of here is some nice broth. So I'm gonna be straining out the broth, separating the broth from the turkey. And we'll be using both the broth and the turkey meat in this recipe. Just recently, I did a video teaching how to can cooked turkey or really cooked meat. Make sure you check that out if you're wanting to learn about that. I'm just gonna be using a simple strainer to strain out the broth. We'll come back to these in a little bit, but I think it's time for us to move on over here by the sauteed onions. Looks like they're nice and translucent and the edges are starting to brown a little bit, so they're ready to move on. I'm gonna to add to this one quarter cup of flour. And we're gonna stir that around in the fat and it's gonna make kind of like a paste. Ultimately, it's this flour paste mixed with the fat that's gonna thicken our sauce that's gonna be in the uh, pot pie. Now, we don't want to rush this process. We want this to cook a little bit, maybe brown a little bit. If we can let this cook for you know, just a, a couple minutes, it'll, Kind of make that floury taste kind of disappear into that sauce. If you go too fast, your sauce can taste a little bit like flour. Plus, if it browns a little bit, it's gonna get, it's gonna give a lot more flavor to our sauce. When I strained the broth out of the turkey, I got about one and a half cups of the broth I want three total cups of liquid. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the one and a half cups of broth in here, and then I'm gonna quickly add one and a half cups of milk. Actually, our milk is pretty much half and half because our cow produces so much butter fat. And if you can use half and half instead of just milk, it's going to make all the difference and make this recipe just fantastic. Okay, so I'm gonna just quickly do these things here. Add that and a cup and a half of milk or half and half. I am gonna keep stirring this and I have this on about a medium heat. I'm gonna bring this up to a gentle boil so that it gets nice and thick. This will make fantastic sauce for a pot pie. Well, our sauce has come to a boil already. It's looking pretty great. Should thicken up a little bit more. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this down to low. We're gonna let this simmer for 10 minutes. But right now is when I'm gonna add the freeze dried veggies so that they have more time than just the cooking time to rehydrate. I'm gonna shake them up a little. Cause it looked like the corn had settled a little bit just because the pieces are so little. Okay, I'm adding one and three quarters cups of the freeze dried veggies. those in. So we're going to let this simmer for 10 minutes. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and add the final things that we need in here. I'm going to add two pints of the turkey.
I'm also gonna add some seasonings. Now, because we aren't using store-bought broth or store-bought meat, there's very little salt in everything that we've made here. So I'm gonna add um, one teaspoon of salt. This is pink Himalayan salt. All of these seasonings I actually buy in bulk from Azure Standard. I'm gonna add half of a teaspoon of black pepper. And one teaspoon of dried parsley. I actually just got this parsley in. I ordered a pound of it and I didn't realize how much a pound of parsley is, like what quantity. This is only a third of it. So guys, uh, I'm gonna have dried parsley probably for the rest of my life, especially because, you know, you use a teaspoon here and there. Okay, let's go ahead and mix all of this up. And then it's just gonna sit here until we are ready to put our drop biscuits on top. That is what we're gonna be working on next, the drop biscuits. Also, now that we're to that point, we're gonna preheat the oven to 425. Okay, moving on to drop biscuits. I love to make drop biscuits because they are super easy. I rarely roll out biscuits because drop, bis drop biscuits are just so much easier, I guess, and a lot less stressful to get perfect. Okay, we're gonna start off with two cups of flour. We're gonna put all of our dry ingredients in here first. One tablespoon of baking powder. Now, because Missouri is quite often very humid, my baking powder kind of gets clumpy. So I always sift it into my baked goods so that somebody doesn't end up with a giant clump of baking powder or baking soda in whatever it is that I'm baking. So I just sift it, make sure there aren't any clumps. We're also gonna add half of a teaspoon of salt. Again, I'm using pink Himalayan salt. We're just gonna mix that up really briefly. Okay, the next ingredient is some type of fat. I am gonna be using the home rendered pig lard again from Our Own Pigs. We're gonna be putting in one third of a cup of lard. I have done this same recipe using butter. You can use shortening. Uh, but we really enjoy these drop biscuits using our home rendered lard. Okay, now we're going to mix in the fat with our flour mixture. I'm going to make sure to get all of that out of there. Now, I forgot to say I've also used this recipe with um, coconut oil, but it has to be a solid fat that you're working with. I'm going to be using a pastry cutter to blend in the fat to the flour. And we're basically wanting this to turn into coarse crumbs. That is mixed up as much as it needs to be. There are no big clumps of fat, so we're done with that. We just need to add our milk. Now again, our milk is more like half and half. You can use milk, I'm gonna use this. If you have half and half, it'll make these even more wonderful. So we're going to add one cup of milk. Pour that in, and then we're really just going to work this as little as possible just to wet the ingredients. Now, this is gonna be a lot stickier dough than if you are used to making roll-out biscuits. But drop biscuits are a nice alternative. The biscuits are all set. Let's go put them on our pot pie. So we're just going to drop these biscuits by kind of a big tablespoonful, just right on top of these. Well, it's just as easy as that. Now they just go in the oven. These need to bake for about 18 to 20 minutes. 
I'm gonna go ahead and set the timer and we'll be back at a jiffy to try this pot pie. The pot pie is finished. Let's take it out of the oven so you can see how just beautiful it turned out. Now it did take quite a bit longer than 18 minutes to get done. I'd say it's been about 25 minutes. So let's see what it looks like. Ooh. How beautiful is that, you guys? It's gorgeous. It smells amazing, but it is so hot. We need to let this cool down before we can taste it. I know it's gonna be amazing. What we really wanna try are those freeze-dried veggies that are mixed in there. They look fantastic, everything does. So let's just wait a little bit so we don't burn our mouths off and uh, come back and have a taste. All right, this has been cooling off and I've been smelling it from the other room. It <laughs> smells awesome, so we're not gonna wait any longer. We're gonna give it a try. Now mainly, again, we're trying to concentrate. We've made this recipe a lot of times with fresh or frozen vegetables. Yeah. So we, we know the recipe is good. What we're trying to see is how did the freeze dried veggies work in this recipe? Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna try some green beans because in my experience with other things that we've made, green beans are one of the harder things to get rehydrated correctly. They kind of end up a little on the rubbery side. Mm -hmm. So let's try it. Okay, and I have green beans also. They're really nice. They are. They're really actually. nice and soft and they're not rubbery at all. No, they're not. No, that's actually really good. I think because you cook it for so long, you let it simmer in the pot and then you let it simmer in the oven. I think that was the perfect amount of time to get them rehydrated. I'm gonna try some carrots. They're good too. I just tried the corn, the say. carrots and the lima beans. They're all very good. Yeah. I think it's fantastic. Right, you guys, this is awesome because now we can just have, you know, a can of this sitting around put it in our recipes and it'll be perfect. You know, when we originally were talking about getting a freeze dryer, one of the things we were excited about is being able to have stuff like this just kind of on the shelf, ready to grab and, you know, be able to throw together quick meals. And really this, I think, accomplishes that. Like, this is exactly what we were going for. Right, if you guys are wanting to know more about the Harvest Right freeze dryers, make sure that you check out the link to that company in the description of this video. The one that we have that we use is the medium freeze dryer and we have the, the, and we have the Premier oil pump. So if you wanna look at those specifically, go ahead and check those out. You guys, we hope that you enjoyed coming along on this process with us. We get lots of questions, not only about how to uh, freeze dry, but how do you use the freeze dried stuff and how do you just incorporate that into your meals? We're so glad that we were able to show you how we are starting to incorporate the freeze dried food into our meals. If you're enjoying our channel and the content that we put out, I hope that you'll hit the subscribe button before you leave. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and remember as always, the absolute best way that you can help us is by sharing our videos on all of your social media. Until next time, thank you so much for stopping by our homestead. Take care and God bless. God bless.